Here you are, miss. Is this the main entrance? Yep. Well, the best of luck, lady. Thank you, but how did you know? I couldn't miss. Your face is all lit up like a church. <laughs> is it that bad? <laughs> it's swell. Keep it like that and the guy's yours for life. Thank you. Are you getting married, too? Yes. Oh, gee, I'm nervous. You know, this is my first time. I suppose after you do it three or four times, you sort of take it in stride. He's almost an hour late now. Gee, you don't suppose he walked out on me? Oh, no. He probably got held up in traffic. I had an awful time getting down here. You see where we're going to have our first battle before we're married. Well, it's about time. Oh, I had to wait to get my paycheck, didn't I? Oh. Well, good luck. I hope your show's up. He will. Good luck to you. Thanks. Come on, Al. Street emergency. All right, folks, break it up. Are you a relative? No. No, I'm not. Okay, let's get the report. Donald Gordon, 32 Channing Road, Mount Vernon. Age 24. Postgraduate student, Harvard University. Basal fracture. Body to be held until claimed by family. I wouldn't do that. Wouldn't solve anything, only make a hole in the water. Mm, you're young and attractive. You've plenty of time for that. No man's worth it. They're just a lot of insects cluttering up the earth. If you hop in there just because he's thrown you over, you make him much too important. Mm. Sorry, I haven't any cream. Thank you. You're very kind to bother about me. Not at all. Glad of the company. Can I have a little brandy in it? No, thanks. I rather like the combination myself. I can't understand it. We had so much to live for. We're so full of life. Yes, but that's how it is. They always take the good stuff away and leave the waste. I must be going. Where? I don't know exactly. Haven't you any home? Not now. But you have a family. Can't you go back to them? No, I can't. They're nice people and I... I wouldn't want to hurt them. You haven't told me all your story, have you? Amongst other things, I was a pretty good surgeon once. And you're going to need a lot of care for the next few months. Better let me help you. That's the girl. <laughs> Wells Prize offspring this morning. Jim, isn't he beautiful? Looks like a red cabbage to me. Oh, now you've hurt his feelings. Don't you believe it. He's just playing for sympathy. 
Jim, are you sure of these friends of yours? You're sure they'll love him? I've known Phil and Jane Marshall for years, ever since my college days. They're fine people. They've always wanted children of their own. So you see, there's a lot of affection awaiting this little fellow. Besides a good home, everything he needs. You sure you want to give him up? I haven't any right to consider myself. I'm not going to let him pay all his life for something that wasn't his fault. What can I do for him? I haven't any home or money. I, I haven't even a name to give him. I just couldn't do that to him. Jim, they must never know about I me. I promised Margot. That'll be between you and me. Mr. and Mrs. Philip Marshall are here. It's one of our newest models, has so much importance. Yes, isn't it stunning? But do you think it's quite my type? Oh, my dear Mrs. Wyndham, you'll be amazed. Why, it'll make you look like a... a feather bird. Oh, it's you. What are you trying to do, ruin my business? I'm just trying to save this poor creature from your clutches, you mercenary wench. The things you'll do for money. Quiet. Oh, uh, Miss Benson, show Mrs. Wyndham the other model. You know, the red one. Oh, it's got the red one. It'll make it look like a fire truck. Oh, excuse me. Come over here, you idiot. What is it you want? I'm busy. There she is. Who? Oh, is that the girl you told me about? Yes, and she's a very high-class person. Had lots of experience in this kind of thing. Oh, she certainly doesn't look it. Oh, come on now. Quit being the hard business businesswoman. You're an old softy and you know it. All right, I'll talk to her. Miss Weston, this is Miss Martin. How do you do, Miss Martin? How do you do? I hear you've had lots of experience in this kind of work. Oh, no, I haven't. I thought she had. My mistake, Harriet. Well, if you'll just give me a chance, Miss Morton, I feel sure I can make myself useful. Yes. Uh, well, excuse me a moment and I'll see. That's all settled. Do you really think so? I know it. She's a fake. You'll like her. Well, I... Uh, guess I'll be going. May not be seeing you for a while. I'm going to miss you. You'll be all right now. Keep your chin up. Goodbye. Goodbye, Jim. I... I don't know how to say it, but you do know I'm grateful, don't you? Forget it. Oh, Jim. Just a minute. I haven't decided anything yet. Yes, you have, you old hypocrite. See you when I get back. Well, where are you going now? Different places. Oh, on one of those filthy boats, I suppose. Oh, Jim, why don't you pull yourself together and stay put? Why? Why? Oh, I could kill you. A man of your talents jumping around the seven seas like an ordinary roustabout. The ocean is the only place we haven't turned into a garbage can. I like it. It's antiseptic. Antiseptic. How long will you be gone this time? Just a short trip. Don't worry, honey. You'll be proud of me yet. And uh, be nice to the girl, will you? Well, if Jim Howard didn't make so much sense, I'd say he was crazy. Have you known him long? Not very. Only long enough to know how good he is. Oh, he is that. He's either the most charming or the most aggravating man on earth, isn't he? Well, he's certainly the most charming. Hmm. Now, let me see about you. All right, report to Miss Fennick at nine in the morning. Oh, thank you.
This is lovely, but of course the sable you can wear with either your afternoon or your evening things. Oh, would it be lovely with my new evening frock? What do you think, dear? I think you'd better send it out. I know you'll enjoy it. Miss Weston's leaving for Paris in the morning and she'll select them herself. Yes, goodbye. That'll work out fine in wool. Harriet, have you forgotten that cocktail party? Oh, I wish I could. I hate them, even if they are for business reasons. Say, Margot, why don't you come along with me? Oh, no, thank you. I have a million things to do before tomorrow. I haven't finished my packing yet. By the way, did you check how many lames we have in stock? Mm-hmm, we've only got two. Say, so we better order six more. How do I look? Wonderful. As though you patronized the Harriet Martin shop. You better hurry up. Five drinks behind. Don't worry, I'll catch you up. Have a good time. I'll take care of everything. Margot. I don't know how in the world I'm going to get along without you. Oh, you'll struggle along. Go on, get out of here before we both get sentimental. Okay. Goodbye. Lady, can you spare a dime? Yes, I said. Jim! Oh, Jim, darling! Oh! Oh, I can't believe it! Where in the world did you come from? I just got thrown off a boat with a load of cows. I still can't believe it. Five whole years and not a line from you. Why well, didn't you get my card from Mozambique? Oh, you didn't send me a card from Mozambique. That's right, I didn't send you a card from Mozambique. Oh, you ought to be shot coming back here just when I'm going away. Where are you going? To Paris to do the fall buying, my first trip. Oh, come on, let's go to dinner. We've so much to talk about. I need a shave. I can't come up with you looking like this. Oh, yes, you can. If I let you out of my sight now, I won't see you again for another five years. Come on, let's go to dinner. Uh, just the same, I insist on a shave. And I'm telling you, the little businessman like me don't stand no chance in a country like this. The millionaire, he's got the ICC. The worker, he's got the WPA. The farmer, he's got the AAA. But what have I got? And my ex. I wouldn't say that. But I am saying it. The little businessman like me is the forgotten man. And I am the forgotten man. I slave all day and half of the night to pay my taxes, to pay my two barbers. Hey, six o'clock, they put out of the head and go home. They work eight hours a day and then go out to join themselves. But me, have I got the Wagnerak? No. I slave 16 hours a day. And what do I get? A wife and 10 kids. I tell you, this system is all wrong. How was it where you came from? Oh, there was much worse. What are you squawking about then? Listen. This is a free country and I can squawk so much as you please. Over there, I couldn't even open my mouth. Say, uh, I hate to interrupt you, but we came here for a shave. Yes, madame. That's just what he's going to get. I'm sorry, but I still disagree with you. Huh. Discreet, huh? Yeah. Jim. Here's to seeing you. Did I forget to tell you how great you look? No, you didn't forget. Do you mind if I tell you again? No. You look alive and happy. Are you, Margot? Oh, yes, Barry. Harriet's been wonderful to me. She's given me every chance even to letting me go to Paris. And now you've come home. Why shouldn't I be happy? How about the boy? Seen him? No, Jim. No, I couldn't do that. But I've kept track of them. I was awfully worried when Phil Marshall's wife died, but I understand his sister has gone to live with him. I hear she's devoted to Roddy. Now, what about you? You're going to stay this time, aren't you? Well, I don't know. I thought of shipping out again after more cows. Cows? What cows? Didn't I tell you? Oh, I'm a doctor. I'm one of our very best cattle boats. Why? I'm fond of them. They're peaceful, gentle, understanding. In fact, I'm devoted to them. Oh, Jim. Oh, you just can't go away again. Couldn't you... Couldn't you find something to do here that would keep you happy? Well, I guess I could find something to do to keep me, but I don't know how happy. I... Uh, I know how happy I would be. Are you in your naive little way trying to tell me that you'd miss me? Saying it bluntly. 
I would miss you terribly. So much so that... Well, if you do go, my trip to Paris is off. Well... Here's to your trip to Paris. Quatre-vingt-dix francs. Ninety francs? I've never paid more than fifteen. Mademoiselle, de l'hôtel jusqu'ici, c'est quatre-vingt-dix francs. But the hotel is only six blocks away. Mademoiselle, le taximètre est juste. Vous me devez quatre-vingt-dix francs. Payez-moi et voilà tout. I don't know what you're talking about, but I do know that ninety francs is too much and I'm not going to pay it. Au revoir, ma chérie. Mademoiselle, je veux mon argent. Payez-moi. Vous me comprenez? Alors, non. Mademoiselle, ça m'est égal. Si vous êtes italienne, française ou russe ou allemande, vous me devez 90 francs et je les demande. Go ahead, go ahead, shout as loud as you please, but I'm not going to let you cheat me. Allow me, mademoiselle. Vous faites payer trop d'argent, mademoiselle. Vous savez bien que l'addition est seulement de 15 francs. Euh, monsieur, vous, vous avez tort. Vous avez entendu, mademoiselle. 15 francs. Préférez-vous que j'appelle un sergent de ville hmm. De faire 16 francs, mademoiselle. Thank you so much. Allez. I didn't care about the money, it's the idea of being cheated. Oh, mademoiselle is perfectly right. No one enjoys being cheated, especially by an insolent fellow like that. Thank you again. Oh, mademoiselle, I'm Count Giovanni Corini. Well, that's very nice, I'm sure. Uh, it is evident that uh, mademoiselle needs an interpreter. I should be very happy to be of further service to you. Oh, you're very kind, but I'm sure I can manage. Thank you. Uh, Taking off the wrap, please. I'd like to see the back of the gown. Thank you. Oh, it's you again. You see, you do need me. That one sight of you was fatal, mademoiselle. I could not let you escape. Really? You are the most feminine, the most mysterious, the most beautiful woman I have ever seen. I am in love with you. I fell in love with you at first sight, madly in love. That's very flattering, but I'm busy. Oh, that is nothing. I will wait. I will love you when you are not busy. You'll have to excuse me. I have work to do. Work? For you, a beautiful, glorious creature like you? Please. Oh, may I see that? Lovely. The gown, yes, the woman, no, too thin, no substance. She is not like you. You are made for moonlight on the Riviera, for romance, for love. It is for love the world goes around. For love of you, I would do anything, but anything. Would you go away? Mademoiselle, for you, I would even go away. Bonsoir, monsieur. Ah, Mademoiselle Weston, I hope you enjoyed the show. Oh, very much. I'm coming in tomorrow and talk to you about three or four of the models. Oh, très bien. I shall be delighted. Au plaisir, Mademoiselle. Goodbye. Wait, Mademoiselle. Oh, my dear, enchanting Mademoiselle. You must be exhausted after so much work. I thought I told you to go away. I did. I went, but now I am back. Oh, the so adorable one is weary. But in Paris, there is a quick remedy. We go to the Café de la Paix, an aperitif will refresh you. No, thank you. Oh, your voice is so rich, so rare, even when you say no. Perhaps a nice ride in the Bois, behind a nice, leisurely horse. And tea at the Madrid. No, thank you. Ah, I know. You will dine with me at La Faison Dorée, the most unique spot in all Paris, the essence of France. They serve the most exquisite food. Le canard presé, truffe with champagne sauce, wood berries and red wine, and such a bleu, oh, perfection. Oh, now you interest me. I knew you could not resist me all Oh, don't be encouraged. It's not you, it's the food. Now, where is this little place, this essence of France? Oh, you could never find it by yourself. Even Frenchmen cannot find it. I will have to take you myself. Where do you live? At the Ritz. Yeah, I will be there for you at eight. Taxi. The Ritz. 
Ah, it is you again. Be sure you do not overcharge the beautiful lady, understand? No, no. Why would I want to try to cheat the beautiful lady? Why didn't you tell me you could speak English? Why didn't you ask me, lady? Allez, allez. Ah, mademoiselle. Oh, you amaze me. You are more exquisite tonight than you were this afternoon. Impossible. How could I be more exquisite than you said I was this afternoon? When a Corinne is in love, nothing is impossible. Come, let us go. What are we doing here? I thought I was going to see the Spirit of France tonight. Oh, I decided you would not like it. Besides, the music here is much better for me. Two, please. Oui, monsieur. What a lure, what rhythm. Like the graceful dive of a swan. We must be married immediately. You're the craziest person I've ever met. I'm no catch for you. I'm only a poor working girl. Oh, money. That is all you Americans think of. My two brothers married for money. Why shouldn't one Corini marry for love? No reason in the world. You may never get another offer like this. You're quite right. I'm sure this couldn't happen to me again. But I'm warning you. When a Corini fastens his eye on a woman, she never escapes. <laughs> Thank you. I can make it go up, too. You can? Well, isn't that wonderful? You get long line if you go up first and then come down. All right, let's go up. All aboard, going up. Now we'll go down. It's not so bad, dear. Now we'll go down again. Main floor, everybody out. I am the elevator all by myself, didn't I? Mm -hmm. Oh, but you're too little to be the operateur. I'm afraid you frightened the lady. Oh, no, she liked it, didn't you? It was more fun than a roller coaster. Let me fix your tire. Bonjour, Mademoiselle Weston. How do you do? I'm going to Deauville for a few days. If there are any messages, just hold them. Shall I make a reservation for you at Deauville? No, thank you. That's all been taken care of. Is there a letter for me, please? I'll see. Yes, there is one for Master Roddy Marshall. Is that you? Of course it is. You know that. Look, it's from my daddy. Come, Roddy. Look, it's from my daddy. Can you read it to me? Sure, darling. Dear Roddy, Tell the captain to make the boat go a mile a minute, or I shall have to turn into a whale and swim out to meet you. We have five new rabbits, and we're all lonely without our little general. Love, Daddy. Five new rabbits? Gosh! Come on, Roddy. Auntie is waiting for us. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye, Master Roddy. I hope you can ride with me again. I'd love to. We are going to miss Master Roddy. What boat is he sailing on? The Normandy, mademoiselle. Book me on the Normandy. Oui, mademoiselle. Thank you. There's no answer. Oh. Want a bite? Oh. Hello. Oh, hello. I didn't know you were going to be on this ship, too. Didn't oh. you? Oh. I'm terribly sorry. Is there anything I can do for you? No. My auntie is sick. She's in bed. Oh. 
Why don't you go to your cabin and lie down? I'll take care of Roddy. Oh, merci, mademoiselle. That's awfully kind of you. Can you ride the scooter? No, but I'll try. How fast will it go? I think it'll go about 60 miles an hour, don't you? Oh, I think so. All right, toot toot. <laughs> oh, what in the world are you doing on this boat? I told you you could never escape me. We Corinis are men of purpose. But you're wireless. Oh, and... never mind that. Who knows better how I feel, the wireless or me? Uh, I'm very sorry I knocked you down, sir, but this is a very fast scooter. Yes, yeah, so I see. Count Corini, allow me to present Master Roddy Marshall, your rival. I'm very pleased to meet you, sir. I regret that I cannot share the same enthusiasm. We shall meet with pistols at ten paces. My seconds will call on you in about uh, 20 years. Say, what's he talking about? Nobody knows, not even himself. Let's play some more. All right, fine, come on. Come on. Oh, no, please, not now. I wanted to talk to you alone. Oh, come on, the exercise is good for your circulation. My circulation is perfect, thank you. In fact, too perfect. <laughs> Roddy, someday you'll be the world's champion swimmer. Gino, do the whale again. I have a better idea. Come, my little friend. We will walk out until the water comes up to our necks. But your neck is up higher than mine. That is the idea. You can't fool him, Gino. Gino, do the whale again. Oh, Margo, I appeal to you. I am exhausted. Can't we stop this nonsense and have cocktails? Oh, go on, Gino. Do the will just once more. This is the last time. <laughs> now there's a problem. Oh, I think we ought to let up on Gino. He looks pretty weary. Thank you. I will do the same for you sometime. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Roddy, darling, I think it's time for your nap. Can we play some more? Just a little bit, and then I'll take my nap. I promise. Oh, we'll have plenty more time for play. We still have two days. But two days isn't long enough. You know, I'm having such a good time. So am I. <laughs> oh, I had no idea engines could be so exciting. Yes, very exciting indeed. Gino's all dirty. So are you. Officer, have we been everywhere? Everywhere, sir. Have we seen everything? Everything, sir. Thank you. For that much, I am grateful. I am going to bathe and rest. <laughs> <laughs> when you go up, are you going to be an engineer? No. I'm going to drive an automobile as fast as it can go. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> Oh, thank the officer, darling. Thank you very much. You're welcome, Sonny. Come back any time and bring your mother with you. That's not my mother. That's Margo. He thinks you're my mother. My mother's up in heaven. We better clean your face. Oh. You are quite sure this is the most secluded spot? Yes, sir. You will not be disturbed here. Thank you very much. Merci, monsieur. Oh, mamma mia. Gino? Oh, Margo, no. I thought we were going to be alone. Must he always come too? Of course. Why not? Doesn't he ever run down? No, he's wound up for keeps. Oh, isn't this nice? So cozy and quiet. Come on, Roddy. Let's sit down. Come on, Gino. No, I don't know why I stand for this. Oh, isn't this what you wanted? Here we are, together in the sun. What's the matter with him? Is he seasick? <laughs> oh, dear. I think we've tried him out. Can you read me a story? Mm. Oh, not little black Sambo again, please. <laughs> Let's see, where were we the last time? I know. So he put on all his fine clothes and went out for a walk in the jungle. Now you. And by and by he met a tiger. And the tiger said to him, Little Black Sambo, I'm going to eat you up. And Little Black Sambo said, Oh, please, Mr. Tiger, don't eat me up and I'll give you my beautiful little red coat. And the tiger said? Very well, I won't eat you this time, but you must give me your beautiful little red coat. So the tiger got poor Little Black Sambo's beautiful little red coat. And went away saying, now I'm the grandest tiger in the jungle. Mm. And little black Sambo went on, and by and by he met another tiger. And he said, uh, little black Sambo, I'm going to eat you up. Gino knows it too. Yeah, I ought to. 
Now you are, though. And little Black Sambo said, Oh, please, Mr. Tiger, don't eat me up, and I'll give you my beautiful little blue trousers. Mm-hmm. Well, here we are. Oh, Roddy, we do have fun, don't we? We sure do. <laughs> are you going to miss me a little bit? We dock tomorrow, you know. But aren't you going to come and see me sometime at my house? Oh, maybe, but I'm pretty busy. I think we'd better say goodbye now. We might miss each other at the dock. Okay, goodbye. Won't you say goodbye, Margo? Why? Because it's my name. Goodbye, Margo. Goodbye, Roddy. Bye. Remember Jessica, don't you, Roddy? Oh, hello. Did you have a wonderful time, Roddy, dear? I wasn't seasick. The captain said I was an old soul of the sailor. <laughs> Margo! Harriet! Darling! Oh, it's so good to see you. Am I glad to see you? Say, what in the world have you done to yourself? Done what? Well, you're positively glowing, and that means only one thing. It means me. You? Uh, certainly. I have brought excitement, gaiety, and love into her life. Hurry, dear. This chatty little person is Count Giovanni Carini, Miss Moy. I am John. Is he a real count? So he says, but then he talks a great deal. I have said only one thing in a thousand different ways. I love her, I adore her, and she must marry me. Don't mind him. He just raves on and on. Where's Jim? Oh, you know, he hates all this fuss. Margo! You didn't think I could find you, but I'm a detective. Hasn't the tiger eaten you up yet? Oh, no, he wouldn't dare. The detective. Uh, I think I better attend to my luggage before he turns me into a seahorse. Excuse me. Au revoir until tomorrow. <laughs> my dear, he's fascinating. Are you really going to marry him? Oh, Harriet, be yourself. Here's my real romance, Roddy Marshall. Well, that's more like it. Somebody with a future. Give me your keys and I'll look after the luggage. Oh, yes. He's kind of cute at that, isn't he? Thank you. Where's your auntie or your nurse, darling? There's Daddy. Come here, Daddy. Oh, there you are, you little monkey, huh? Daddy. This is Margo. She played with me. How do you do? How do you do? I'm Margo Weston. Roddy and I became great friends coming over on the boat. Oh, yes. My sister's just been telling me about you. Thank you very much for your kindness to Roddy. Oh, I was kind to her, too. We had a swell time. We saw the dynamos and the radio station and played tag and swim. Roddy usually kills his friends with kindness. I'm glad you survived. Oh, there you are. You had us worried running away like that. Miss Weston, this is Miss Reed. How, How do, you do you do? Oh, Miss Martin was telling me you went to Paris to get some gas. Yes. Well, I must come in and save them. Please do. Martha's waiting, Philip. Oh, yes. Well, goodbye, and thanks so much again. Goodbye. Bye, Margo. Don't forget you're coming to see me. Yes, darling. Yes, do. We'll be glad to have you. Thank you. Come on, Roddy. Bye. Goodbye. Hey, there's a customer I hope we get. Miss Reed, why? Why? It means a whole truth, so she's going to marry Phil Marshall. She is? Mm-hmm. Pretty lucky, isn't she? Yes, very. Come on, let's get the custom set. Well, it's wonderful what love will do. What are you talking about? Poor Jim. Jim, what's happened to him? Working himself to death. A job, really? Uh-huh, doing research work at the Rockefeller Institute. Oh, Harriet, that's wonderful news. Oh, uh, customs, I'm in a hurry. Margo West. All right, don't get excited. He's having dinner with us tonight. Oh, I can't wait. I'm going to see him right away. <laughs> When do you look up every Tuesday? I've been two weeks trying to corral this particular bug. Now you scared him away. Well, can't you get him back? Whistle to him or lure him with a nice chubby little female bug. Not this shrewd little monster. You have to use strategy and patience. He's one of the Staphylococcus boys. You don't say, Dr. Howard. 
Well, well. Oh, I couldn't wait until tonight. That's why I rushed up here. I had to see you. Nothing much to see. I'm only a lab assistant. Oh, well, what difference does it make? You're doing the work you should be doing. Oh, Jim, I'm so proud of you. You would better be. It's all being done in your honor. Uh, you got something to tell me. Come on. What is it? I've seen him. Who? Roddy. Where? I met him in the elevator in Paris entirely by accident. Oh, Jim, he's such a darling. Then I found out who he was and took the same boat back. We've had the most glorious holiday, just the two of us. And Phil Marshall was at the dock. I met him and he's invited me to call. Of course, you've no intention of doing that. Why not? Why not? Oh, Jim, is it too much for me to hope that I might have the boy again someday? It's a great deal too much. But why is it? Phil Marshall is getting married again. Why can't I go to him and tell him that Roddy is mine? Tell him the truth about him. He might even be willing to let me have him. Are you out of your mind? But he's mine. We've had four days together. So close together. Do you think I can just cut that off? You've got to. He's not yours anymore. You made a bargain, you've got to stick to it. Remember what you said that day? About giving him a name? Jim. I was a little crazy. Don't worry, I'll stick to my bargain. That's better. I should be so grateful. I've had more of Roddy than I ever dreamed of having. Now Phil Marshall is going to marry a charming girl, so what am I fussing about? I don't know what. <laughs> Must be your devotion to the stead of uh, the things, the bugs. Well, that's easily remedied. Oh, no, you don't. You've got to sit right there and conquer that little fellow, and I'm going to the shop. And tonight we'll have dinner together. You've eaten one of my steaks cooked a la me. All other steaks will taste like shoe leather to you. Mm -hmm. Once you've tasted one of my biscuits, you won't need gravity to hold you down. You need it? Yeah. I'm sorry, Miss Weston. The elevator's out of order. Oh, how long before it'll be fixed? I don't know. We're having trouble with the electric current in the building. Well, looks like we'll have to go to Tony's and have him cook the steak. Nothing's going to cheat me out of my chance to prove how handy I can be in the kitchen. Might make all the difference in the world to you someday, if you should consider my qualifications. My dear woman, we're going to walk. Walk? Fourteen floors? We'll never even make the tent. We may be marooned, but we'll never starve to death. Come on. Oh. After this climb, that steak better be good. Next one. Oh. A little exercise sharpens the appetite. And another thing, you're no gentleman. Something in the way I climbed the stairs? No, but when I started to play out, a gentleman would have offered to carry me piggyback. I thought of that, but it's too old-fashioned. Grandma did that all the time. She used to carry Grandpa to market every Saturday. Locked. Yes, it's locked. There's keys in my bag. Well, that's a help. Key. Key. Ah. Key. Miss Weston, the elevator's running again. Don't look, he's not there. It's the altitude. Thank you so much. We'll walk. That's more like a lab than a kitchen. Which one of these gadgets is the stove? Oh, that piece of furniture over there is the stove. It'll do everything but give you a shampoo. I've never cooked with electricity before. I always used charcoal. Are you preparing an alibi for that steak? Where's the pan? Here. I can cook a steak on anything that gets hot. Now then, which one of these things? Last one. There's a little something missing here. No fire. Oh, don't be silly. It's a wonderful stove. Say, maybe we don't live right. You got a fireplace? Oh, yes, but you can't cook in it. It's for looks. Well, then we're going to break up some furniture and start a fire in the middle of the floor. Nothing's going to cheat me out of cooking that steak. Oh, now, just a second. Say, now that the elevator's fixed, how about concentrating on my stove? Thank you. If I were a French chef, I'd be in tears by now. I'm hungry. 
cheese. Got crackers? Oh, we bought them, I think. If we missed them, it was the only thing. What's this? Cold roast chicken. What's cold roast chicken doing at my steak dinner? I've had men tell me they could cook before. I was hedging with the chicken in case you happened to have an accident. And it happened. Well, how do you like that? All over the world, my steaks are famous. And you have to insult me with chicken. Worse than that, cold chicken. Just for that, you get the neck. Mm. Well, as the smallest of six children, I never got anything but the neck in my family. Mm. I like it. Vegetables. Great stuff for the machinery. More darn vitamins. Where's the wine? Oh, here. Wonderful accomplishment. Why didn't you just hit it over the table? Mm. Careful, you'll spill it. Are you trying to boss me? I am. Any objections? No. None that I can think of. Good to have you back, Margot. <laughs> You're getting old, Jim. Repeating things. It's worth repeating. It's good to have you back. Like it or lump it. I like it. Please don't ever go away again. Not as long as you're here. Oh. Well, master of the steak, what do you have to say about this? I'm proud of it. Nobody can look at that steak without saying, well done. That one's too heavy for the material. Yes, but the color's a good contrast. I like this one. Okay. I came to see you. Well, good for you. How did you get here? He's a packer. Oh. Miss Weston, Miss Reed is asking for oh, you. Oh, thank you. I'll be right out. Well, what have you been doing with yourself? I went to the circus yesterday, and the little fat clown waved to me. Was he a friend of yours? No, he just waved. <laughs> Come on. That son of yours certainly has a crush. Looks like it, doesn't it? If you'll excuse me, Miss Weston will take care of you. How do you do, Miss Reed, yeah. Mr. Marshall? Oh, Miss Weston, I want to see so many things. I'm just beginning my trousseau. Oh, well, I know we'll find something you want. Well, this is no place for us, son. Come on. But can't I stay with Margo a while? Well, Miss Weston's going to be busy. I'm afraid you'll be in the way. Oh, no, I won't. Please, Daddy. Oh, let him stay if he wants to, dear. I don't mind in the least. All right. Be good. Mind Jessica, and don't flirt with Miss Weston. I'll see you later, dear. I'll send the car back for you. Thank you. Let's sit over there where it's comfortable. Oh, Evelyn, will you get the sketches and samples from my desk and have Lucille put on the Rene model? Yes, Miss Weston. Oh, getting married is much more strenuous than I'd imagined. I'm just about worn out. Oh, you must be. Well, we'll try and make this part of it as easy as we can. Well, besides all my shopping, I've been moving my things out to Mr. Marshall's Westchester home. Is that so? Yes, I'm having the place redecorated. It's so old-fashioned, full of stuffy antiques. And I might as well live there while it's being done. You know, you have to watch decorators every minute. And they took everything out of my playroom, and I can't find a lot of my toys. You'll survive. You had too many anyhow. But they were my favorites. Hush, Roddy, we're busy. Oh, uh, this is a lovely model. Very simple, very distinctive. Mm, no, it's too plain. What's that she's got in her hand? Roddy, will you please sit down and stop? Now see what you've done. I'm sorry. If you had obeyed me, it wouldn't have happened. I didn't mean to. Oh, it was just an accident. After all, he's only a child. It's no excuse. Now you go over there and sit down and keep quiet. Oh, he's been so pampered. It'll be a relief to get him off to military school. Military school? But it... isn't he awfully young to be away from home? Oh, no, it'll do him good. Besides, Mr. Marshall and I are going to be traveling a lot. Oh. Oh, no, no. Now, haven't you got something not quite so severe, a little more feminine? With a little more allure, you mean? Well, yes. Uh, well, something like that. Oh, yes, that's very pretty. I like that. Turn around, please. Could you copy for me in Rose Point? Yes, of course. It will be very expensive. Well, that doesn't matter. Now, let me see some hostess gowns. Lucia, would you please put on the Benoit model? Look, there's Gino! Hi, Gino! And what is my hated rival doing here? Oh, now I see! He's with Miss Reed. But how do you always manage to acquire the most beautiful women? Beg pardon? May I present Count Giovanni Carini, Miss Reed? How do you do? I am charmed. Gino played with me and Margot on the boat. Oh, it made my trip very pleasant. I must apologize for this intrusion, but I thought you might have tea with me. Oh, let's all have tea, and I'll have a chocolate sundae. Why, Roddy, dear. Oh, is this young man a relative of yours? Well, not yet, but he's going to be my son shortly. You are going to be married. 
Again, I am too late. Oh, woman, beautiful woman. Your heart, like the moon, is always changing. You bend like a reed with every breeze and leave me bereft and lonely. You Latins are quite impetuous. Only when we have the true inspiration. Jessica Reed is a superficial, selfish female. She has no more love or understanding for children than an ox. I tell you, she's not going to be a mother to my child. I'll see to that. Oh. Well, I don't know yet, but I'll find a way. Phil Marshall is not going to marry that woman. Suppose he loves her. How can he love her when he doesn't know her? He's never seen the real Jessica. She's too clever for that. Pretending to him how much she loves Roddy and all the time planning to get rid of him as soon as she can. I tell you, she's not going to ruin my child's life. And don't you try and talk me out of it. He's not your child. After all, Jim, I am his mother. You're not his mother. When you gave him up, you did so irrevocably and completely. Besides, you're not the only one involved in this. I'm as responsible for Roddy's situation as you are. Phil is my friend, and I won't have you interfere in his life. None of your business. But Roddy's life is my business. I'm going to make Phil Marshall see Jessica Reed for just what she is. Oh, well, I don't know. It's all so... Mm. What'd you say? Oh, I was just thinking about cows. How serene and peaceful they are, so easy to handle. Oh, you and your cows. I'd like to speak to Mr. Marshall. Margot Weston. I'm sorry, but Mr. Marshall has left for the day. Oh, he's gone to buy a bicycle. Well, if it's very important, you can reach him at Sachs Taylor's toy department. Oh, it's not that important. I had some samples I wanted to get to Miss Reed, but I can make other arrangements. Thank you very much. Oh, Margot, I wanted to ask you about... Why, where are you going? To buy a bicycle. A bicycle? Are you being funny? Say, what are you up to now? Well, if you must know, I'm delivering some samples to Phil Marshall. Phil Marshall in a bicycle store? Yes. Well, I'll be down, so it's the father now. Well, remember, he's no five-year-old. Oh, <laughs> don't worry. This is strictly business. I hope so. That's all right. Uh, don't be afraid. It'll hold you all right. Okay. <laughs> That's a little small for you, isn't it? Yes, it is. Why, Miss Weston, how do you do? How this do is a pleasant see? coincidence. Oh, it isn't a coincidence. I was looking for you. You were? Mm -hmm. Your secretary told me you're here. I wonder if you'd be kind enough to take these samples to Miss Reed. Why, I'd be glad to. Say, will you do me a favor? Of course, if I can. Well, I'm trying to buy a bicycle for Roddy, but I seem to have lost my perspective. Do you know anything about him? Oh, I used to. Well... Do you know anything about sprockets, too? Uh, this is a Benson, madam. One of our very finest domestic models. It's equipped with coaster brakes, uh, cushion seat, adjustable handlebars, uh, at 2250. No tail light. Uh, well, of course, I think that could be arranged. That's a good color. Roddy's crazy about green. Well, if you had a little boy, what kind of a bicycle would you choose for him? Oh, an Atlas, our very finest imported model. Uh, right over this way, please. Here it is. Double drum brakes, a mattress seat, free wheeling, and a tail light. <clears throat> Guaranteed for a lifetime. Twenty-seven fifty. Say, this one's a beauty. <laughs> nice and light, too. Mm -hmm. uh, not too fast for a little boy, is it? No, no, I don't think so. That is, we've never had any complaints. Just try that horn. <clears throat> <laughs> I wonder if it's strong enough for no, it. Go ahead, stand on it. Uh, scoot around. Oh, no, no. Oh, just go ahead. Really? Oh, it's, go it's all right. Certainly. <laughs> He'll take it. Thank you. <clears throat> Hello there. <laughs> How's the big bacteria man? Fine. How's the economic royalist? No, oh, having trouble getting my fourth million. Margot busy? Uh, no, Margot's not here. She's at Sachs Taylor's toy department with, uh, yes, with Phil Marshall. Oh, is she? So that father and son look like competition. You better look out. Thanks for the warning, old girl. I'll do the same for you someday. <laughs> well, aren't you going to wait? Oh, I don't think so. Oh, here are some gardenias. I picked them in the park for you.
Well, I hope Roddy will think it's as good as we do. Oh, I'd love to see his face when he gets it. I hope I remember all those names. He's going to ask me a million questions. Uh-huh. Strictly business, eh? Hello, Harriet. You seem to have quite a way with a gentleman. Something you learn in Paris, no doubt. I haven't any idea what you're talking about. All right, you don't have to tell me. I'm not in the least bit interested about what happened in the toy department. Oh, I know you're not, darling. Say, you're all dressed up. Where are you going? Out. I know a gentleman who rides a bicycle also. Oh, by the way, Jim left these here for you. Jim? He was here? Uh-huh. How long ago? Oh, I don't know. About an hour. Why didn't he wait? Well, I asked him to, but he wouldn't. Oh. Well... Did he say where he was going to be? No, he didn't. You know Jim. Oh. Did he say he'd be at Nick's? No. No, he didn't. Ah, oh, my beautiful ladies! Oh, Harriet, tonight you are like to bury. You could lure the hearts of kings. Mm-hmm. This is going to be an interesting evening. Oh, so this is the gentleman you know. No, oh, Margot, my sherry. You are like an angel. I'll take the berry. You know, Marco, my dear, I still think you're the most beautiful, the most gorgeous girl in the world. But I must do something with my evenings. Mm. Come on, Count, old boy. Good night, my dear. Yes, my darling, Harriet. Good night, darling. Good night. Have a good time. He says he's going to teach me the big apple or something. Hello. Yes, this is Miss Rigg. Would you like us to come out there and give you your fitting? I know how busy you are. Oh, that would be so helpful. I've been terribly rushed. I haven't had a minute. Will you please stop pinching me? Yes? Oh, this afternoon would be fine. Thank you so much. I'll be out in a few minutes. Margot! Yes, I know. I'm beautiful, gorgeous, exquisite. But you are. See how I fly to you when you call. At last you need me. I knew you would. Yes. Uh, now, Gina, how would you like to take a nice ride in the country up to Westchester? Alone with you? No. I do not think I would like it. Oh, you're going to love it. Oh, but why do you bring me here? It looks very dull. Oh, don't be too depressed, Gina. You might find something to amuse you. And of course, I want that torn out. But that's a Georgian fireplace. I don't care what it is. I don't like it. Oh, that'll be all for now. And I'd like the sketches submitted this week. Miss Weston, this is so nice of you. How do you do, Carteret? I'm very happy to see you again. I hope you don't mind my bringing the count along. Oh, not at all. Well, there's no hurry for the fitting. Let's have some tea or a highball. Well, these things should really be unpacked right away. Oh, yes. Well, will you take them upstairs, the room at the end of the hall? We'll go in the library. Thomas, some highballs. Julie, be careful about the ship one. Yes, Miss Marshall. Margo! Hello, Roddy. Hello, Miss Marshall. Glad to see you again, Miss Weston. Wait, you see what I've got. It's a peach. Daddy bought it for me. Wow. A bicycle. Come on and see it. Look, Margo. It's important and it's got free wheeling, too. Oh, that's the nicest bicycle I've ever seen. Can you ride it? Sure. Watch me. Think we'll make it by dark? Sure, we'll be in Africa by dark. Okay. But marriage is for ordinary women, not for a vital, fascinating creature like you. You belong in the gay capitals of the world. You are a femme du monde. Really? But really, you fire my imagination. I can see you on the sands of Arabia, on the steps of Russia. I can see you dancing the Tarantella in Sorrento. My, how I do get around. <laughs> <laughs> I never knew China was so far away. You don't get tired quick like Chino, do you? No. Then come on. All right. Say, is that Miss Reed with Roddy? Oh, no, sir. I heard Roddy call her Margot. Oh, Miss Weston. Looks like 
we're in trouble, partner. There's a motor cop after us. It's Daddy. How about a race? Let's go. Only my pride. You don't ride very well, do you? <laughs> Daddy, you can spare. Are you all right, Daddy? Yes, I'm all right. Come and rest with us, Margo. Well, if you country boys can't stand the pace, I suppose I may as well rest, too. Son, I got an idea Miss Weston's rubbing it in, huh? Daddy, why do you always call Margo Miss Weston? She's Margo. Well, that's all right for you, but... That's all right for you, too. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Daddy, why can't Margo come and live with us? Well, Margot's got her own home. <laughs> Jessica had her own home, too, and she lived with us. Yes, but that's different. How different? Well, um, darling, Jessica has to live with you now because, well, because she's going to make your house all over into a nice new modern one. Daddy, Jessica's going to move my room, and I don't want to be moved. I want to stay near you. Oh, don't you worry, son. We'll see what can be done about it. Ow! What's the matter? Ooh! The man's injured, Dr. Brown. Can't you do anything for him? Yes. No! Oh. Put out your tongue. Say, uh... Ah. Uh. You have to have an operation. Hmm? Come see my nurse tomorrow, and she'll arrange you. <laughs> You'll have to get a new nurse tomorrow. I'm going back to the dressmaking business. Oh, say, must we break this up so soon? Oh, I'm afraid so. I have a customer waiting for a fitting. Oh! Daddy can't take it anymore! <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, here you are. It's time for your supper, Lottie. Come on, Daddy and Margo. You sit with me while I have supper. Thomas, where's Miss Reed? She's in the library with Count Corini, sir. Count Corini? That's Gino, our friend from the boat. He drove out with me today. Come on, Daddy and Margo, please. I really shouldn't. Oh, come on. Tell Miss Reed we've gone upstairs. <laughs> Something terrible has just happened to me. What? Only once before has it ever happened. When I held a little Norwegian girl in my arms. The first time I was ever in love. Do you feel my heart beating? No. You don't? <laughs> Your technique is really amazing. Technique? You mean you do not believe me? But I tell you things like this only happen once, maybe twice in a lifetime. No doubt. Shall we go on with the dance? Oh, by all means. Aren't you going to eat your carrots? I don't like carrots. I'm afraid Dr. Brown is just a quack. Daddy, what's a quack? A quack is a carrot hater. To think we've been bicycling with a quack. If I eat my carrot, will I stop being a quack? You most certainly will. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> my, what a charming picture. Oh, hello, dear. Count Corinne, do you know Mr. Marshall? How do, How do you do? do? Hi, Gino. How do you do, my little friend? Weren't we to have a fitting? Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Reed. I've been enjoying the boy so much I didn't realize how quickly the time was passing. Goodbye, Roddy. Goodbye, Margo. Goodbye. It's been such fun. I do hope I see Roddy again before he goes away. Roddy? Away? Yes. Miss Reed tells me you're sending him to military school. Well, I don't think we decided yet. Shall we go? Of course. Bye. How about a drink? Uh, I would like it uh, very much. <laughs> Good. Will you please leave us alone until I call you? Yes, ma'am. Close the door after you. You're very clever, aren't you, Miss Weston? I have to be to deal with women as intelligent as you, Miss Reed. Well, you'd better confine yourself to clothes. I happen to know exactly what you're doing. Yes? Yes. I know why you're pretending all this touching devotion to Roddy. I know about the bicycle buying interlude. I know why you maneuvered to get out here today and why you brought the Count with you. Really, Miss Weston, you've been very obvious. You're not fooling me. Women can't fool women. No, they can't, can they? Then don't waste any more of your talents around here. There must be other rich men coming into the shop. If you can't find one with a child, find one with a mother. Work on her. That approach is also effective. But you haven't a chance here. I, uh, I don't expect you to understand this, 
I'm not interested in getting Phil Marshall for myself, but I am interested in seeing that you don't get him. You're not good enough for him. You don't care anything about him, and you care less for the child. Listen, I'm engaged to marry Phil Marshall, and I'm not going to let any ordinary shopkeeper come in here and take him away from me. Is that clear? Perfectly. In other words, Phil Marshall is a very good business investment, and you're going to protect it. Exactly. I've worked very hard to land him, and I'm going to hold him. Will you have a cocktail? No, thank you. I'm just leaving. Cocktail? Would you like to take me out tonight? Sounds like a very good idea. Where to? Where to? Oh, can't we just drive around for a while? Uh, okay. You got something to tell me, haven't you? Right again. What is it? Oh, I can wait. Let's just sit like this for a bit. Mind if I tell you a little story? No, I'd love it. Well, once upon a time, do you mind the once upon a time method? <laughs> no. Once upon a time, there was a fellow who couldn't stay put. He thought the only way to live was to roam around on boats, doctoring cows. Then one day, he met a girl who said she wouldn't go to Paris unless he stayed in New York. He didn't want to stay, but he did because she was such a very nice girl. So, he got a job peering at bugs through a microscope. He got pretty good at it. But now he doesn't have to look at bugs anymore. Well, maybe occasionally a very important bug. Because they made him a full-fledged bacteriologist. And he owes it all to that very nice girl. No. Yes. Oh, Jim, how long have you had this news? Just a couple of hours. Oh, that's wonderful, to be promoted so soon. Oh, you must be brilliant. Well, there isn't a doubt about it. What's your news? Oh, oh well, mine can only be told with... Dim lights and soft music. The Delta, right away. <sighs> You're taking your success very quietly. No hooping, no hollering. It's a sign I'm going to be serious. But we're celebrating. This is no time to be serious. Ah, oh, but it is. Now, go. I'm going to say something I've been wanting to say for a long time. There you are. I get myself all set and this has to happen. <laughs> well, there's always the table. Beg your pardon, I think you have the wrong table. Margo, my enchanting one. Count Corelli, Dr. Howard. My pleasure. How do you do? Please, won't you sit down? Thank you. I met the Count in Paris. Happy coincidence. Coincidence? Never. I find her no matter where she is. Love is my guide. It was love at first sight. Gino believes in being frank at all times. And why not? If I love her, why shouldn't I tell her? Why shouldn't I tell everyone? Latins are like that. The Latins have the right idea. Yes, to it. Garçon, more champagne. Oh, uh, I think we are all going to get along splendidly. Yes. Well, here's the courage. I'm going to need it to say what I want to say. Jessica sailed for England last night. Oh. You know, it's fortunate things turned out the way they did. We were never meant for each other, she and I. I love you, Margot. I guess I have ever since I first saw you. That day on the dock with Roddy. We both love you and need you. Will you marry me? You know, Roddy would be the happiest little boy in the world if I could tell him that you were going to be his mother. Oh, I don't expect you to answer now, but... Will you think about it? Yes, Phil, I will.
Regent 32281. Research laboratory. Dr. Howard, please. Hello, Jim. Oh, Jim, I've got to talk to you. Can you come over? Are you all right? Sure, I'll be right over. Hello, Jim. Well, you look very lovely tonight. What's the excitement? Shop burned down? No. Um, will you have a drink? Uh, no, no thanks, no. No, I think I'll just have a cigarette. I'll just have a cigarette, too. Sorry. What is it, Margot? Phil Marshall's asked me to marry him. Oh. I was so concerned about Roddy, I, I couldn't see that this might happen. Of course you couldn't. You're going to accept? Jim, it means that I can have Roddy always. I can be sure he's loved and protected. I have to accept. Of course you do. Roddy comes first. It's Roddy against the world. Even against yourself, you can't change that. Your heart has always been filled with that boy. And unless you have him, there isn't room for anyone else. You and I can never fight that. I wanted you to say that, Jim. I knew you'd understand. But... What? I'm a little frightened. Why? I'll have to tell Phil about me and Roddy. Why? Well, I... I just couldn't live near the boy the rest of my life and not let him know I'm his mother. I... I just couldn't. And it wouldn't be fair to Phil. Now you listen to me. You can't have everything just as you want it all the time. There's a penalty along the line somewhere, and your penalty is to go in there and keep quiet. You're going to marry Phil Marshall and keep your mouth shut till you die. That'll be between you and me for keeps. You love him? No, Jim. I love you. Oh, that's enough for me to go on for the rest of my life. Goodbye, Margot. Goodbye, Jim. Yes? Mr. Philip Marshall's car is here. I'll be down in a few minutes. Good evening, Miss Weston. Good evening. Hello, Margo. Hello, Phil. I've been waiting, but I wasn't sure you'd come. Well, here I am. To stay? Yes, Phil. To stay. Say, what are you doing up? I didn't have Oswald, and I can't go to sleep without him. Where is he? In the icebox. In the icebox? What in the world is he doing there? I put him in there because he was a bad boy. <laughs> well, I think we better get him, don't you? That's a pretty guess, Margo. I put it on because I was coming to see you. Oh. Roddy, would you like me to stay here with you? You mean live here forever? Yes, dear. Guys, that'd be keen. I'm glad. Then we can tell stories and play games and go fishing. Oh, we're going to have such a lot of fun, aren't we? You bet. 
Oh, Daddy, guess what? Margot's gonna come and live with us. We just fixed it. Oh, you have, have you? Then I think she ought to know what goes on around this house. Oh, why does she look so funny? Oh, poor Oswald's frozen stiff. I see what you're getting into. You're liable to find yourself sitting in the icebox some bright morning. <laughs> oh, but mine won't fit in the icebox. <laughs> <laughs> well, here he is. Doesn't seem any the worse for his adventure. Thanks. Well, now that you've got Oswald back, it's time for you to go to bed. Good night, son. Good night, Dad. Can you tell me a story, Margot? Of course, darling. What would you like? Little Black Sambo. Well, once upon a time, Little Black Sambo was...